Welcome to Shape of the City. I'm Clover Frederick and I'll be your host. It's that time of year again with kids heading back to school throughout the city. Today, we'll talk about what every parent should know regarding their children's health and wellness during the school year. Joining me today is Michelle Welsh, the Wellness Coordinator for Lincoln Public Schools. Thanks for being here, Michelle. Thanks for having me. Well, now let's get started. Now, kids are at school to learn, so tell me why health and wellness is so important. Well, really, health and wellness is a piece of every part of their learning because if kids go to school and they don't have fuel in their bellies, they're going to have a tougher time. If kids really feel that need to wiggle, especially if they're younger, mm -hmm. if, if they can't settle down to learn and focus, they're going to have a tougher time in school. So everything that we do in wellness really is integrated into what's happening in the classroom and really into making our kids be su successful students. Great. Now tell me about the wellness program at Lincoln Public Schools. Well, you know, the wellness program at Lincoln Public Schools is kind of unique in that we really do everything integrating both what we're doing for teachers and what we're doing for the kids. But particularly what we're doing is we have kind of some pushes that are what I would call kind of the cheerleading events. We do four events per year that are challenges that kind of bring wellness to kind of a fun little point and, you know, get kids involved, get staff involved, but then really our big goal is to integrate what we're doing in the classroom to every day what's happening for kids in keeping them healthy and fit and ready to, ready to learn. Great. Now what are some of the activities that you've done in the past and what's the focus going to be this year? Well, you know, what we really have done is focuses on sleep focuses on breakfast, focuses on kids being active in different ways that they're being active. Um, lots about nutrition, of course, because that's something that everyone's always focused on food. But we really try to focus also on more of the um, social emotional side of wellness as well. So kind of a real mix. When you, when you think about what we face as adults and what our kids face, you know, if we don't get enough sleep, we're just not going to be as good at work. It, and so for the kids too, we really focus on those different pieces above and beyond when we think of just food and fitness. Great. Now tell us about Fit by 2020 and the recent obesity and fitness numbers that came out in the spring. Right. We've been really, um, ever before I was on the scene, this is my fifth year with the schools, but before I was on the scene, they really started collecting great data. And this is a combination of work between the physical education and health folks, um, the health office nurses that the kids go to see when they get scrapes and bumps and bruises, as well as the PE. They really measure fitness. And then they really look at how our kids are growing and look to see if there are any concerns or, or questions related to that. And they've been collecting this data for some time. So what they were able to do is look at that data and say, what are we seeing as trends? Each of these kids is, is you're my kids, go through the process. We can kind of see how their grades change. And if those kids are really seeing a big upswing in weight, if they're seeing an upswing in how fit they're being and how that's also impacting them academically. And what's great is our data assessment folks working with Partnership for Healthy Lincoln, Mary Bell Avery, Bob Browner, all those folks together um, they have really been working together and doing some really neat uh, data trending to be able to see what's happening. Then we've tied it to academics and so we've been able to look at what's happening for kids in physical activity and fitness in what's happening for them with obesity and how are those kids being successful in the classroom. And that has really made a big difference in how our principals and our administrators and how our teachers have really realized, gosh, this fitness business really makes a big difference in kids being being active and, and getting involved in wellness. And so we're really excited about how that has helped to make such a big difference in helping people realize health is well beyond, you know, what size pants you wear and helping kids to really be healthy and, and be successful in the classroom. Now, is wellness as simple as just nutrition and exercise? Well, you know, there's no doubt food and fitness play a huge role in what's happening. But I really think of wellness as, as so many more dimensions as we really look at kids being healthy and, and being successful. And really, truly, the sleep piece is a huge piece that's overlooked. You know, if you have a kid that's really you know, staying up gaming late or they have a hard time getting to sleep, they're going to have a tough time in the classroom. If you have kids that don't feel safe in their school, if they're feeling bullied, if they're not feeling like they have friendships and connections, that's a piece of wellness, too. And that's the thing. You know, Wellness really attaches to everything. If I look at what's happening when I go to my office and the district offices, there is hardly a department I don't work with because it makes a big difference. And when kids are at different ages and different stages, it, wellness looks a little different. For instance, when the kids get to middle school, for instance, if they're doing consumer family science classes, what they learn for recipes, some kids have never cooked before and may never have cooking lessons again. Those recipes they learn may be their only set of recipes they know their whole life. And so if we're teaching recipes that aren't healthy at that point, 
that makes a difference. If we think about how much our kids, I have a 12 and 14 year old, and so what they choose for themselves every year, they start making more independent choices. So as we really change how we approach consumerism and how they spend their dollars when they're out making their own food choices, that makes a difference too. So even business classes, and we're doing things with them. So it really doesn't, there's, there's no stone unturned, it feels, when we talk about how wellness really integrates into what's happening in the classrooms. Great. Now, as parents, what are the, some of the simple things that we can do at home to keep our kids and our entire family healthy during the school year? Well, you know, there's, there are lots of pieces that really can be simple, but that are very hard. Because we all know as parents, it's hard to be the guy that lays down the law and makes it be consistent. But really having a consistent bedtime and helping that set as a standard young and then continuing to move that up as you kind of see how that works with your kids. That's a huge piece. How we manage screen time is, is huge. And you know, I took the modem and, and put the modem away before I left today because I just know, you know, sometimes we have to protect our kids from themselves. And we have to really know when they need room and when we need to be able to pull that back. And so really being serious about how we approach gaming and how active and fit and, and how much fun does your family have being active together can make a huge difference too. So you know, if, if fitness is important in your life, it's going to be important in their life. We know that you know, a good share of our town, over 40% of our families are single parent families. They just have less resources of parents at home. And I think about my kids when they come into the kitchen, they open up the cupboard and I'm saying, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I don't know. They're just kind of bored eating. And I think kids that are home by themselves, what we buy and bring into the house matters so much. If we have things laying around that we think, oh, well, I don't want them to use the stove, but we have things that really aren't healthy for them to, to eat, and you know they're gonna eat them. And especially the older they get, they're just going to be going through a lot of food. It makes such a difference what we have around. And what we have is convenience foods. If we have fruits and vegetables ready to go, if I have my grapes cut up, the kids eat the grapes. If I have other snacky things around, they're gonna eat the other snacky things. And so we just really have to be, as, as parents, kind of smart about what choices we're making of what we have available to kids because we're all convenience people, adults and kids alike. We're gonna eat whatever's there and whatever's convenient. We're not gonna go through a rigmarole <laughs> to do that. So doing the preps on the weekend or whatever days or times you have off, really can be a huge important piece. But getting out and being active as a family, huge piece of the puzzle. And having those times when you walk with kids and don't have devices with you, the talks you have are a big piece of the social emotional wellness as well. Now where can parents go to learn more information? They can learn a lot about what's happening within wellness and they can actually take the challenges we do home and they can also use them within their business setting or within their family and do challenges themselves. If you go to www.lps dot org backslash wellness you can see each of the challenges that we're doing and you can play along you can see all the information we have available the information we have available for classrooms and for your staff either there's nothing that parents can't get to so they can look at all the different resources we have available and we love them to look and see what's going on because parents are a huge piece of this puzzle schools only eight hours of the day and so when we think about the rest of the day that, that's going on for your kids, what they're doing in their off time, what they're doing for snacking, what they're doing for sleep, a huge piece of this has to happen at home. Schools can't be the only place that it's happening. And so we all are, are partnered in this and we work tremendously closely. We have so many great community resources and Partnership for Healthy Lincoln has a great website and they have all kinds of different resources your family can take advantage of. I really encourage people to go to healthylincoln.org and look at all the partnerships and all the people in your area, in your area of town and resources available for your family to keep your family healthy. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Michelle. Absolutely. When we return, we're going to learn about the healthy activities that are happening at our community learning centers. My name is Rebecca, and I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. I believe healthy living starts with each of us, but building a healthy community takes a team of individuals and organizations.
Nebraska. I'm proud to be part of a community where healthy living is a priority. Welcome back to Shape of the City. I'm Clover Frederick, your host. Lincoln's Community Learning Centers, or CLCs, provide a safe and healthy place for students before and after school and throughout the year. We'll learn more about the centers and some of their new and exciting health programs. Joining me today are Barb Fraser from Lincoln Public Schools and Deborah Williams from Lincoln Parks and Recreation. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Now let's start with Barb. Barb, tell me exactly what are the community learning centers? That's a good question. The community learning centers, or as you said, CLCs, are a strategy that brings students, families, and neighborhoods together to provide what children and youth need to be successful. They connect partners and the resources that are needed to help remove barriers to student learning and development. The partners provide before and after school programs, as you mentioned, also enrichment programs, health and behavioral health services, and community development and neighborhood kind of strengthening. And that school acts as the hub for all those many different activities. None of the CLCs look alike, but they try to be responsive to the needs and the assets that are in the area around them. There are three main goals for the CLCs, improve student learning and youth development, strengthening and supporting families, and strengthening and engaging neighborhoods. Now, you mentioned that there are several locations. Tell me about those. There are. Um, as you look at the map, you can see that there are 25 different sites throughout the city, 25 Lincoln Public Schools, and there are a mix of people involved with those, LPS administration, teachers, staff, CLC families, and other partners help in the actual running of those community learning centers. That includes one high school, six middle schools, and 18 elementary schools. As you can see, those are somewhat scattered throughout the city. And then we have 10 community agencies that actually help provide staffing to those community learning centers. Each agency hires a school community coordinator who is right there on site. They kind of act as a broker to help look at what our interests, what our assets, and how can we kind of bring people together to help meet the needs. Uh, some of those agencies include the Northeast Family Center, Lincoln Housing Authority, Boys and Girls Club, Willard Community Center, Family Service, the YMCA of Lincoln, Nebraskans for Civic Reform, Malone Community Center, Lincoln Parks and Recreation, and Cedars. Um, now, how are the CLCs and LPS partnering together for health and wellness efforts? Well, a number of the CLCs have already been doing wellness activities. Some help tie into LPS wellness challenges, like you heard, some are champions. Some will tie in with their school efforts with Fuel Up to Play 60. Um, some have community gardens. 
we're looking to learn from kind of those that have been successful and see if we can help maybe spread those to more sites. Uh, we really want to see how can we tie family programming and student programming into those wellness challenges that LPS will be doing and how can we just help connect them with other community programs that are going on throughout the city. Now how are the community learning centers partnering with other health and wellness efforts going on throughout the city? Good question. Um, we, when Screen Free Week was here we tried to help promote that and um, let them know about resources in the community. Um, there are farmers markets taking place right now throughout the community and we've tried to help just tell parents and other people about the importance of eating healthy and where there are resources in the community such as farmers markets to get those. Um, community gardens is a big interest and we're really looking for how can we help more people know how do you set up a community garden, how do you take care of a community garden, how might you use those healthful foods to improve nutrition and be healthy. Okay. Now I understand that the CLC has recently received a grant from the Centers for Disease Control. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, we uh, are with Partnership for Healthy Lincoln. We have received some of the partnerships to improve community health funds. And with that, we were able to send Deborah to a SPARK training and we'll be looking at training more of our site staff in the SPARK curriculum. Um, we want to really try to focus that kids are moving in some of that after school time and that we want to increase the amount of time that's spent in moderate to vigorous physical activity throughout the week. Okay, well Deborah, tell us more about this SPARK grant. SPARK is a research-based curriculum that has been in existence for over 25 years. The curriculum has won numerous awards. SPARK stands for Sports play and active recreation for kids. The goal, some of the goals of SPARC is to um, prevent childhood obesity and promote a lifetime of wellness and healthy activity. Okay, well what's unique or special about SPARC? SPARC is um, a highly active curriculum. The kids are continuously moving throughout each activity. The activities are all non-competitive. Um, Everyone wins, no one loses. Um, each activity has different levels of participation, so it includes all the kids, and the kids can participate at whatever level they feel comfortable at. Um, the curriculum includes physical activity, education, and nutrition. Very good. Um, now, what has your experience been so far, and how do you see using this in the community learning centers? I have. Um, utilize some of the activities in my own programming at Parks and Recreation. The activities are very adaptable and um, includes all kids and um, how I see us using it in the community learning centers is to enhance the current program and the recommended, um, can't think of the word I want, <laughs> the, okay, the, um, the recommended, it is recommended that all kids have one hour of physical activity every day and that is very hard for kids to get when they're in school and so I think implementing this in the community learning centers will promote that physical activity um, and help the kids achieve that one hour of activity every day. Well, it sounds like kids would love to be at a CLC to participate in something like this. Now, Barb, can you tell me more how a parent might learn how they can get their kids into one of the CLCs? Um, parents are welcome to visit with the school office and they can connect them directly with the staff that are at that community learning center. Um, people can also visit our community learning center website, www.clclps.org, and there you'll find a listing of all those schools for sure. Great. Well, thank you both for being here, and thank you for your efforts on health and wellness in our community. Sure. When we return, we'll learn more about how to keep you and your pet healthy during these hot months. Never leave your pets unattended inside your vehicle on warm or hot days. During warm or hot days, temperatures inside your vehicle can reach over 100 degrees, even with the windows down. On warm or hot days, leave your pet at home. Thank you. Hi, I'm Officer Finelli with Lincoln Animal Control and I'm here to give you some tips about getting your pets safely through the summer. 
Just like your family, you want to make sure that your pet is in good health. It's really important to have your dog or cat vaccinated against rabies. Uh, that is a virus that could spread to humans. We want to ensure that our pet's in good health, so an overall vet check is always welcome. Also make sure that your animal's licensed. Uh, at any point they do get out, we'll be able to return it to your home and ensure that they're uh, safe with the family. <laughs> to stay happy and healthy with your pet, we want to ensure that uh, we're getting plenty of exercise, we're going out walking with our animals. Lincoln's got plenty of trails within the city. It's a fun area to take your dog out for a walk. Just ensure you're leashing your dog when you go out on our trails. We want to make sure that if our animals are kept outside, we have water for them at all times and a shelter. We also want to make sure that we have access to shade. Right now the weather is getting very hot and uh, if you're going to take your dog out for a walk, you want to make sure that you're bringing water with you as well. Additional advice for pet owners would be if you're going to take your dog out with you, do not leave it in the vehicle. Right now the weather is so hot that it will create an oven inside your vehicle and your dog will initially go into heat distress. Uh, if anything, leave your dog at home. There's no reason to take your dog out uh, in weather like this where you're going to have an issue with leaving him in the vehicle. A quick story, uh, last week we had a few kittens, it was six, stuck within a picket fence. They were all the way down uh, at the bottom of the six foot fence. We were able to extract them, get them out safely. Uh, all of them in good health. They're uh, taken to the Humane Society and were put up for adoption. And that's one of the many good stories we have here at Animal Control. Shape of the City is dedicated to helping Lincoln stay informed of health and wellness topics and events. Visit our calendar at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword 10health. If you'd like to see your event covered, email us at 10healthlincoln at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Until next time, get active, eat healthy, and stay informed. Mm -hmm.